En Redacción Atómica charlamos con Jenny Beth, con las exigencias, por supuesto, de la nueva normalidad, en una conversación por Zoom. Jenny es la cantante francesa conocida por ser vocalista en la banda londinense Savages y presenta su primer trabajo en solitario, To Love is to Live, un álbum de clara influencia post-punk en el que la autora muestra su faceta más vulnerable y en el que ha colaborado con nombres como Joe Talbot, vocalista de Idols, y el actor Cillian Murphy, además de colaborar en la grabación con diversos artistas como Atticus Ross. The first question, uh, how does the, the album come up? Like, which was the first song you, you wrote for this album? Oh, um, probably either And the Man or Innocence. And how did the, the idea for, for the album come up? Like, uh, when you decided to, to write an album on, on your own? I think it's, um, well, it's a mix of things. I think it was... Um, I, I couldn't really explain it. It was a necessity for me to do it. I felt that almost it was like a life or death decision <laughs> in terms of uh, feeling like I needed to express something and, and it felt um, absolutely necessary to do it. And no matter the consequences or, or the difficulties, it felt I, I, I had no choice really. It didn't feel like I had a choice. The album starts with, with the song I Am and the first words you sing are uh, I'm naked all the time. Uh, how defining is this sentence in the, in the meaning of, of the whole album? Well, I can see that a lot of journalists or people are, are sort of taking that sentence as an omen to what's going to happen for the re rest of the record. Mm -hmm. And to be honest, I can see why, but also I have to be honest and say I didn't really think it through that much. I just felt it was... It was um, a great track to start the album with because what Atticus Ross had done, I wrote the song with Johnny Hustle and then Atticus Ross produced it and he made it so, um, it, it was clear to me that it was the, the album opener. It was this sort of uh, extremely, uh, extremely dramatic and, and uh, track and with a great sense of suspense and it was the perfect way to start the journey, you know, to start a narrative. Mm -hmm. uh, but I am naked all the time is is kind of sums up for sure, probably the the the, the you know the rest of the album for it because it's sort of um, it's sort of bold but at the same time very vulnerable. Yeah. Uh, while I was listening to the album, uh, for example, in, in the song "Human," uh, I think you break away from humanity in a certain way. Um, but the album itself is really intimate and, and the title uh, alludes to, to love. And those are really human values, I think. So uh, did you think about, about this contrast? Yeah, and I think the record, I always wanted to make a very contrasted record um, musically, but also in its um, message and intentions and subjects, because I felt that if I'm going to write about what it is to be a human being right now, <laughs> um, I sh it should feel contrasted because I think human beings are very um, contradictory, you know, uh, and we we keep having thoughts that don't match together, and still it sort of makes sense as a whole and as a as a species as well. We are very contrasted, you know. Some are pushing for more liberation, some are buying a gun, you know. Yeah. And I feel I feel there's this sort of extreme poles that push, keep pushing in the opposite direction and and somehow it still makes sense as a whole so i think that's quite um the metaphor or a great analogy for what the record is in the sense it's going in various directions it's sort of it's a journey um but it's also i try to be sincere you know all the way through i try to to not hide away my own contradictions i try to um to be honest about my fears, to be honest about the things that I am afraid of, to reveal um, the, my shameful faults, etc. Because uh, I felt that if I'm going to do a personal record, I shouldn't try to hide away those things. And for me, it's a statement. It's, you know, this album is like the beginning of, of a, a journey for me. I feel, you know, at the renaissance of something. I feel... And so it's because it's a beginning, it has, to, it has to be the great foundation for what's coming next, you know, what's coming after that creatively. And 
And if it was going to be the foundation, it had to involve, it had to be quite um, inclusive of everything, if that makes sense. Mm -hmm. uh, you also mentioned the, the, the contrast between the, the music in, in the album, like the, yeah. the, the mix of different sounds and, and genres. Uh, and yeah. it's like a, an experimental attitude. Um, was this difficult to, to assemble uh, in, the album, in the album or it just comes out like uh, in a natural way? Well, there was a challenge to try to, because I, I've worked in different cities in dif with different people in di at different times. So the challenge was to try to keep unity and bring everything back home. Um, but this idea of, you, you talk about um, experimental approach, I actually think it's quite a pop approach right now. Mm -hmm. um, that eclectism it's not this I'm not saying I'm doing pop I'm not doing pop I think that nowadays there is this sort of postmodern approach yeah. to music in pop in the pop world um, it to a point where sometimes it becomes soulless because if you don't know where a style of music a genre of music comes from then you um, you can use it and wipe out a whole community you know you wipe out a whole history and a whole um, even region or a whole area where it comes from it's, it's the same with food you know we you know we, we use we use pepper in almost every every kind of dish but we forget that it comes from india you know and and this you know you wipe out a whole sort of uh history and community that's behind it um and it just becomes this mainstream um uh, thing that we consume but but anyway so sorry i'm going away but i think um yeah, so the record is eclectic, and I think it, it was influenced by, uh, yes, an experimental approach. It's me with my lamp torch trying to go to territories I've never been before, personally, musically. Uh, but it's also something that is quite in the air in terms of um, pop culture, you know, from Beyonce to Kendrick Lamar, even the 1975 today doing this, is this sort of patchwork of sounds. Um, which has its own danger, but it's also quite liberating in, on some level. Mm. Yeah, in the album we also can hear some reminiscence, uh, I think, of the most hardcore PJ Harvey or, or the darkness of Trent Reznor and Atticus Ross, for example. Uh, yeah. How do you think the album will be remembered uh, 10 years from now? Well, I hope it will be remembered. Mm -hmm. um, and I think I, I thought about this record but with that, keeping that in mind, you know, keeping, keeping in mind that it's not a record necessarily for now. I mean, it can be, but it's also a record that's going to outlive me. It's going to stay after I'm gone. And that, that's so you could think that that puts a weight on the work, but actually it liberates it because you feel that it's, um, it's out of your control. Um, but it's also needs, it means the music needs to feel effortless and it needs to be, um, it needs to be the best it can be because it's going to stay there forever. And, and that sort of enabled me to finish some of the work and to try to really push them to as far as it could be uh, with the help of Flood or Atticus Ross or Johnny Hostile, Romy Madlecroft, but all the people involved, um, um, push me to make it the best not not to surrender too soon not to conclude too soon on the music mm -hmm. uh, what did Joe Talbot uh, bring to the album because I think it's a, a very interesting uh, collab and both styles uh, your style and his style are really like uh, uh, easily assembling I, uh, I don't know how to express yeah. uh, what did he, he bring to the at least to the inspiration of the album well he, I asked him if he could write a verse for the song How Could You? And it's a song about jealousy. Um, I wanted to write a song, you know, about, the, about jealousy. I think in my life, I tried to, I tried to uh, dump jealousy, to defeat it. Not to defeat it, because you never can, but, you know, to try to um not let it rule over myself you know especially in, in relationships and love and, and love relationships i think we often have this sort of vision that jealousy is part of love and it's uh, and it's almost a sign of attachment as well and i completely disagree with that but yeah. instead of working with um you know saying in a song oh jealousy is bad we should defeat it i wanted to write a song that 
showed the intensity of jealousy that could reveal its danger and show its violence. And I thought about Joe for it because Joe is someone who really knows his, his own dark side. And he's not afraid to say, I've been a jealous cunt in my life. You know, I've been that man and I'm still am that man sometimes. And, um, so I felt he, he would be a good person to be that jealous man, you know, and to, 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 to describe it in his own ways, in his own words, you know. And uh, to end the, the interview, uh, do you think like the new security measures uh, of the coronavirus and social distancing and stuff uh, can end in a, in a new way of living for us, like uh, a new sex freedom specifically? A new what, sorry? Uh, sex freedom, uh, uh, the way of living our, our sex lives or our mm. love lives and stuff. No, I don't think so. I think um, I think um, people will, will always find a way to communicate, to connect. I don't think it will change that. I think we'll we're still looking for that, even though there are masks, even though there are uh, social distancing. I think there will. It, it will even um, create new ways of communicating. I think I've, I've seen, you know, people wear a lot of masks here in France in shops and, and I realize that people are much nicer to each other because you can't see the smile, you can't see the face. So people express more with their eyes, with their words, they say hello more, they say they're really polite. Um, and I feel, I feel there was still, people will find ways to connect and it creates empathy as well between people. Um, and a responsibility. I think we desperately need to feel responsible, uh, although it's harder and harder to feel yeah. responsible in a world that feels so distant and so atrocities happening, you know, on the other side of the planet. How can you feel responsible? If, I think that's what the record is about as well. Like a song like Innocence is about the feeling of disconnection, the fact that things are happening around the world, but I don't want to be involved. I'm not responsible. How do I find a connection with, with the world? And um, even living in crowded cities and uh, feeling like you're isolated and you, you can't feel for other people. And uh, so that's a real question and a real issue, I think. But art and music, they're, they're the cement, you know. They are the, the link, the way to, to, to keep, to keep um, reflecting on who we are as, you, as human beings and reflecting and also create new connections um there are other things that do that but music for sure is a great vehicle for that <laughs>